Today's video, we feast our eyes on the new Diamond Select Avengers Infinity War Iron Man Mark 50. Iron Man here is a Disney Store exclusive, so as you could probably guess it, if you're interested in picking up this specific one for yourself, you may want to check out your local Disney stores. The very first thing we'll do is take the measurements for the Iron Man Mark 50, stopping the tape measure right there. Maybe right, right there. I think that's a good place to stop. The Ultra Measuretron tells us that the Iron Man figure stands 7.4 inches in height, which if you want that in centimeters, I'm more than happy to oblige. Centimeters, the figure stands 18.8 .8 centimeters tall. The figure really gets a whole ton of different accessories, some of which, like these ones here for example, I don't think actually were in the movie. I'll flip them around this way. It's these little underarm, underhand, looks like almost cannons. I don't know whether they're actually guards or if they're cannons. I think there were actually more so in the concept art that came included when they were designing out the Mark 50. It's got some nice trimming to it, although unfortunately the red has carried its way into the gold. That sort of makes me a little bit on the sad side, but I do appreciate the vibrancy. Is that even a word of the crimson, almost raspberry metallic red that they've put into these, both in the hands and in these little guards? In case you're wondering though, the hands are not removable from them. They're permanently affixed, permanently sculpted in place, permanently perplexed as to what these actually are. I think, again, they're like blasters. He comes also with these little arm guards, a little bit smaller, and trading out the gold instead in favor for the blue. It's almost like a metallic silverish blue. A uh, little bit of paint, unfortunately, just makes it way, make, made its way onto the end there. Again, not something that you can remove from the hands, but instead something you can, again, put into the sockets of Iron Man's hands uh, in the forearms here. I'll show you guys that in a second. Something that does make an, at least an appearance from what I'm aware of is uh, this little uh, arm cannon. Kind of reminds me of like an Iron Man Mega Man sort of thing. And again, this just plugs into his hands. I think this was actually in the film, unlike these that were only in the concept art. Again, very nice silver painted details. You got that glorious metallic red happening in there and some nice gold treatments there too. It plugs right into popping the hand out and it'll plug right into that socket. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll show you guys in a second. Put that right to the side. The last thing that comes included with this Disney Store exclusive is a pair of Repulsor hands. I like that the hands, the repulsors at least, stick out from the hands. Usually they're flushed to the hands. Here instead, you can see they stick quite, quite a bit out from the palms. Again, nicely painted. Gold gets a little messy, but overall pretty happy with the way that they're painted. I'll talk a lot more about the paint in a second. I know there's a whole lot of stuff we're going to talk about in a second. Why don't we get right into the meat and the potatoes of it and talk about the Mark 50. A really sleek, neat looking suit uh, that was worn in uh, Avengers Infinity War. It's one of my favorite of the Iron Man suits just because of the sleek, almost skin tight nature of it. Diamond Select, once again, has done a pretty good job on this figure. It's unfortunate though, there's a few little things that I would have changed differently to it. Many people have commented the fact that his head seems a little bit on the small side. I don't know if I would say that the head seems small, but I think the bigger problem is that proportionally it looks like his torso is much longer and bigger that's throwing off what looks to be a normal sized head. If I took like the head and I matched it to the arms, I think proportionally the head matches the scale of what the arms should be, but it's really the torso that comes across much bigger and it come, almost makes the head look a little bit smaller in the process. One of the other things too is that the arc reactor I feel is a little bit bigger or supposed to be a little bit bigger in the movie. 
it's a little bit small here on the figure itself. Once again, we're looking at some awesome looking paint of this metallic red. Unfortunately, it does come with a price. It does literally come with a price because you have to pick this figure up in the stores. And I think the price point for this guy was $31.95. At least here when I picked it up at the local, somewhat local Disney store, it was $31.99. Which actually I think is a little bit less than the comic book stores where I normally pick up regular Marvel select figures. But I digress. Not digressing though, talking a little bit about the paint. While I do like the paint here, the trade-off unfortunately is areas like the hinges, anything that bends, a knee, an elbow for example, they've put paint over top of that hinge. So this has happened a couple of times and by the time I got to reviewing, most of the paint had already flaked off, revealing only really the color of the plastic underneath. I'm guessing they probably just paint everything not specifically intending to paint like the, the hinge, but ultimately that's just what ends up to get paint in the process. What ha ends up happening though is anything that has friction to it, you bet your bottom dollar that moving this back and forth, paint immediately, if it's right there, it's not gonna be there very long, the paint's gonna flake right off. And sure enough, that's what ended up happening. Areas such as the shoulders, for example, seem to have enough of a gap between this and the and the torso that it has yet to really scrape anything off yet i don't think it's going to be a problem because there's i don't feel like there's friction when i'm moving the arms up nor do i feel like there's friction necessarily when i'm moving the arms forward but i think forward motion is going to cause a little bit more of the paint flaking than surprisingly the out motion of the arms knees also have sort of that same problem Anywhere that red paint has gone over has ultimately just started flaking in the process. But it doesn't seem like there's as much paint immediately getting this guy out of the package as what there was in the in the elbow sockets. So the knees sort of get off lucky, if you will. Um, again, I really love the color. The color is what warms me on this particular figure. Proportionally, yes, the torso does seem bigger. The head seems smaller as a result of it getting a look at the head sculpt it's traditional iron man but then you've got these little side little vented areas on the side of his mask that aren't usually there on the earlier suits it's sort of the same design but to much much more sleeker composition especially like even like the torso area where you see all these little slotted vents making up like the side detailing of the torso sort of does remind me i think of like the I think it's the Mark VI, but again, just much more form-fitting, something that almost looked like vacuum formed over top of Tony's uh, you know, body underneath here. Some nice detailing there also in the legs. The gold and the silver look exceptionally good here. Very, uh, very much on a smaller frame, despite, again, for the fact that his torso does seem a little on the big side. Uh, let's talk a little bit about his accessories. I know we kind of already touched base on that, but I want to show you how those swap out. Okay, so you can go ahead and, of course, take the hands out. Those are really quite easy. Pop the other hand out. And let's say, for example, let's say, for example, you want to use the spreaded. We're going to use this hand here. I'm going to use this hand right here. You can put that in. And, of course, he's got the repulsor blast. Let's say on this hand, for example, we want to use this cannon, this little mega cannon. Just attach that to his hand, and it's really just replacing, unpeg that once again, the hand peg is being replaced now by the cannon peg, and it's going to go into the same hole right in there. Ultimately, this probably will be what I'm going to display the figure with. I like having the little cannon. I'd say little, there's nothing quite little about it. But I like the cannon being in his arm like that. But just to kind of show you the other variations. As I'm doing this, one other hand, on the other hand, one thing I would have liked that they would have included was maybe one of these being traded off. One pair of these, either the smaller or the larger, and instead giving us things like the suction cup hand. The thing that he's attaching to the side of the uh, that ship that's exiting Earth's atmosphere and he starts carving and cutting open the opening in the side of it with the other arm. I wish they had included that suction cup hand, sort of like a four-tipped spread 
of uh, like a kind of a distorted hand that he had on the one side there. But again, we're going to just replace these hands out because I do want to show you how they all look. There's the other set of hands. Uh, personally speaking, again, I probably would have only given him one set of these. It's almost excessive that they give you two sets. Uh, again, you have the option, I suppose, of mixing and matching these, but that's what the smaller ones look like. And we'll just unplug these hands once again. And we'll replace them with the larger ones. Try as I might, I don't remember the, these being in the movie. And I think when I was researching this, I think these ones are something that are only in the concept art. Let me know down below if that not be the case. Again, I like these looks, but I I, I would almost have, because they're similar just size-wise, they're a little bit, this one's a little bit smaller than this one. I would have given up one of these in exchange for something that's a little bit different, a little bit more unique. You can see how that all sort of comes together inadvertently. It looks like it's connected to the form where we know different. It's only really connected and sculpted into the hand portion there. We'll unpeg these and go back to where we started. Go back to basics. Pop the closed fist hands back into place. And we'll just move these accessories out of the way. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk the Iron Man Mark 50's articulation. So his head rotates all the way around. It's unfortunate the way that the ball joints work generally on select figures that you can't move the head any further back than that. Moving it any bit further back sort of relies you on having to lift the head further up on the ball joint. It's a little bit more of that angle back, but it's not unfortunately going to give you the lift because there is so much extra neck happening. And you can also see like the head tilts forward just by the way that they've sculpted this part here. The head moves down but I kind of wish it could have moved a little bit further back and that would have involved probably removing a little back part of this so that the head would have had extra mileage to move, to move the head tilt further back than that. Shoulders, as we've already looked at, move quite easily out. You can rotate the arms all the way around. He has a bend at the elbow, which also allows the forearm to rotate. And in addition to that, the hands also rotate and they hinge back and forth. One of the other problems with this particular figure is that you don't have much. You have upper torso ball joints, but unfortunately it doesn't allow the crunch forward. Sort of because of this little ridge right here on his abdomen prevents the crunch from moving further forward. That's about as forward as it will give you. Uh, the torso also hinges up or back. And like I said, you can rotate it all the way around, all the way around. Legs split out, the legs move forward the legs move back he has a three-quarter cut in the thigh which allows the legs to swivel it just so happens that these legs are just really stiff on my figure but again i would much rather that than really loose ankles or loose any anything really loose like joint wise i prefer something a little bit being more a little bit more stiffer as you can see but the legs rotate all the way around uh, he's got a double hinge on the knee and he's also got a foot pivot. Now, the foot hinges back and forth. And then you can also not quite rock the ankle as you're basically just rotating it back and forth on the ball joint there. Uh, he doesn't have any foot articulation, but he does have, or toe articulation, but he does have uh, peg holes on the undersides of his feet. I suppose if you wanted to make use of a display stand, you could. But there, in a nutshell, is the Mark 50. A really neat looking design. Uh, of course there are things about it that I may have changed, like the head sculpt looks like it's a little small, but I don't feel it's so much the head sculpt, it's just the fact that his torso is throwing off the proportions of his head. It's still a neat looking design, and for what it is, I think Diamond Select has done a pretty good job on the figure. You could say that Tony had some tricks up his sleeve when he finally unveiled the Mark 50 in Avengers Infinity War. Pressing the button around the area of his arc reactor deployed the nanos until the Nantech nanotech suit engulfed his body, giving Tony a much sleeker, slimmer, and overall pretty sexy looking costume versus the bulkier ones that we've seen in the past. Uh, Diamond Select has done a really great job on the figure, though I have to admit 
that the head does look, just by the nature of looking at the otherwise bulkier, longer torso, can't help but make this Tony's head look a little bit smaller. And that's a shame. They have given him some extra accessories, some of which I don't recognize from the movie. It would have been nice, though, that if they had swapped, say, two, one of the, the pairs of gauntlets that he has in this figure, if they had swapped that out, for example, in exchange for, like, the suction cup hand. I'm just sort of calling it the suction cup hand. Or even the dual turbine, that engine uh, thruster that his two legs form together, could have also been a variation that they could have given the figure as well. He's got some glorious color though, loving the metallic red that they've used, the metallic gold, and of course the silver. But again, the problems with painting areas around the elbow hinges, they're very prone to chipping very right away. As soon as you get it out of packaging, as soon as you bend the elbow, that paint's gonna start flaking off until eventually you just have the undercoloring of the plastic underneath. Still, despite for the fact that I wish the accessories could have been a little bit different, and for the fact that his head sculpt seems small, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Um, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, like I said, it's a Disney Store exclusive, so you can either find a Disney Store in your area, or you can search online, and if you want to pick that guy up for yourself, you may have to maybe go through outlets such as eBay. Either way, Today we were having a look at the Diamond Select. This was Avengers Infinity War, and this was the Iron Man Mark 50. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Marvel Select figure reviews, there's a whole playlist for you, as well as if you guys wanted to swing on over to Diamond Select's YouTube channel, you can check out all the upcoming releases that they have before they hit store shelves. And stay tuned, guys, because we're going to have a look at some more Diamond Select stuff in upcoming videos. So if you're a fan of Diamond Select, you'll be hopefully quite happy with some of the stuff that we're going to be looking at on this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do, and I'll see you next time.